Book off and sign wrong. We are going to continue with that simple problem that we did. Five oscillations on the <laughs> and then I'm going to do a practical one. Before we get to that, uh, Omar asked me, is there a way to come up with... Uh... Oh my gosh. I mean, I like that. Yeah. I go, I go, I go. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is an echo. You advertise. No, you're welcome. Well, thanks. <laughs> you try. That's something. That's all my time. I'm not going to do that. After Rose. After Rose. After Rose. Well, Cops and Sandra, uh, Omar asked me, well, is that a way for us to determine? You know, with standard deviations like we did with the constant flux We can't, but what we need are the expectation and the variance. Um, from last time, I, oops, we used P. So we had P because P minus, right? When R gives you the test statistic, it gives you which one it is. V plus. V plus. So do keep that in mind. But you can always get V using V plus, V minus, and vice versa. Um, last time, we had the value of V to be. One. One. Okay. R gave us a value, V plus, which was eight. I think so. V yeah, plus was eight. How do we find V minus? Well, we know if you add V plus and V minus. That is the sum of all runs, and that should equal n times n plus one over two. But it's 15 in our case because we used n to be five. If you rearrange and solve a minus. So, like v is wrong. Yeah. Isn't that V minus? No. No, from our table, V is one. V plus from R is A. One might ask, well, why do we need V equals V minus? You can make inferences simply using V plus and V minus. Um, or v, v plus simply gives you the sum of, you know, positive signs. We know the center. The center is at the expected value under the null is at what value? Five by four. What divide and times n plus one? Okay. N times n plus one divided by four. The maximum value that I can reach is n times n plus one over two. What is the minimum value? One. One. Nice. And last time <coughs> I showed well if v plus is at eight, v minus. Uh, seven and area above, area below, add them together, the p value will be one. That's where we stop. Uh, the expected value, this is under the null, in the sense if you assume that whether it is median equals some five, six, doesn't matter. 
if you assume the null here, then this is what I would expect. Of course, in practice, we're not going to get that exact value because there is well, starts with the letter V. Very good. Very, it's very good. Um, there is variability, and we've got to account for variability. The variance for T plus and T minus, oops, not T at all, I think. Ah, because of non parameter stats. V plus V minus is N times N plus one times 2n plus 1 over 24. That makes look familiar, but mark people, you should know that. For v, the variance is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And the thoughts as to where this is coming from. This is not in the book. I'm certain that I could find do like this. Any thoughts? It's like the sum of squares of which. Very good. This is the sum of squares of n natural numbers squaring, right? So I'm squaring the rounds, adding them together, etc. It is going to end up with that for me. Instead of adding these two, if I subtract it, V plus is N times N plus one over two. Minus V minus the grid. And then I have another V minus. So this is coming from there. And I already have a V minus. That would give me N times N plus one over two minus two V minus. Good. Reduce the second B minus five. This entire part is coming from K. What? B plus plus B minus is this. Move that B minus. Oh. And I'm subtracting that in terms of If I subtract all the negative rounds, from all the positive rounds, I'm going to get whatever that is under the law. Do you agree? Whatever <laughs> is zero, even though we got rid of ties. Theoretically, that should be the middle part. So this is simply V. Good. Now, we know n times n plus one divided by two is 15. V minus seven, 15 minus 14 is one. And that's what we had last time from our table. The table we calculated Manually. Good so far. Again, one might ask why do we want V, V plus, V minus? Well, center, V plus is measuring this side, right? So if you are doing a right tail test, it is easier to look at V plus. Yes. If you are doing a left tail test, Easier to look at V minus. If you are doing a two tail test, you can either use those two together or go with V. 
matter of choice in that is time space rather than light or thing. Good. I haven't gotten to the standard deviation part yet, but if you want to find the p value, you could do a right tail or two tail last time. Two tail. Two tail. Okay. In order to find the p value for a two tail test, we have to add the probability above the test of distance and probability below the absolute value of the test of distance if it is the mean. A plus B minus middle 7.5. So right at the very end of class last time, I added probability from here, probability from that, which is one. Right. If it is a two-tailed test, we've got to add both sides. But I can simply look at me and ask for probability above. Well, you're including the entire probability that is under the Wilcoxon sidebar distribution. Still, one. Agree? Yes. Now, I'm not drawing the distribution here, is, it's not like normal 14 simulation. Good so far. So, last time, did not reject key things to know. If you have times, we have to get rid of that observation. Um, I believe after this was done, someone did an article or wrote an article where you can include time, but in practice, I thought, well, ah, that's just it. Each link said. Okay, um, I can either do it with V plus or V minus or V. Be silly to find an interval with V. Do you agree? How does that work? An interval with V? I'm about to get oh. there, but I'm saying it should be silly for us to form an interval using V. Do you agree? If so, just tell me what. <coughs> How many sides does an interval have? Two. Two. Wow. Only one pair. Okay. <laughs> so you add and you subtract um, to the expected value of V. When you do that, you might get a negative number. Or you will get a negative number. Agree. But is a negative number possible? Just in Jason. What's your name? Jason. It's Jacob. <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> we'll keep changing your name. You, Jacob now. You keep changing his name. <laughs> I'm having a hard time between Justin and Jason. <laughs> um, it is going to give us a negative value. So let's not do that. Let's pick V plus. Let's quickly find this number. If N is five, that's five times six times that's eleven divided by twenty four. So 66 divided by 4, 33 divided by 2. Thirty-three divided by 2. Right. And if you take the square root, you get 
4.12 or is it 4.2? Isn't it just standard deviation? Yeah, it's square root. Right. 4.2. I don't think you got your first calculation correct. This one? Why not? It was 13. Oh, it's, a, it's 55 yeah. divided by 4. My God. Okay. That is 10%. Then to take the square root of 3.7. Exactly. Well, 08. 3.7. And whatever this quick way that I mentioned last time only applies if the data is good. So I'm going to assume that normality points. Two times this value, um, and I'm going to add that. So eight, which is eight plus two times three point seven one. Thirteen point five two. Is that value possible? That's outside the interval. Outside the interval. So I need to count out 15. Right the maximum value is right here at 15. Likewise, we subtract. That's point five eight. And that's time, right? You are way too close, uh, way close to one, the minimum value. So pretty much you've gone far away from the center to the left. You've gone pretty exceeded 15, the maximum value that you can achieve. So should we reject a null or not? Well, you've got to be careful because we want to make our conclusions finally using V. So V, P value above, That it will give us one. Good. If you hypothetically assume there is a curve and you're just finding the area under the curve. Good. So, um, this is what we did last time. That's very small. Source. It gives me a p value of one. Do keep in mind the p value of one that you see is using both v plus as well as v minus the root because it's a two tail pair above, below. Forgetting about that 7.5. Um, because there's a thing called continuity correction, which we will apply, which we apply when we do a continuous approximation such as normal distribution. So ignoring that part, above eight, half, there is some distribution, above a 0.5, below eight, 0.5, you get one. By default, it is two-sided, which is why I'm guessing a p-value of one means that we shouldn't be rejecting the norm, that we should conclude that the median 
we have evidence that support that the median is in fact equal to 3.2. Five number summary. Zoom in. By any chance, it's really hard to see in the back. Oh, it is. Let's try. That's why is that a different to the I just seem to be exactly. You and me. Okay. Now, five numbers. Somebody has five numbers. <laughs> but in the data, we had only five values. Uh, minimum Q1, Q2. The median is three, statistically. Three, 3.2, say, going back to our confidence interval, if the test statistic falls within the interval that we have, we're not going to reject it. Just like we find an interval for the mean, and if the mean that is specified in the null falls in that interval, you can't reject because that is a possibility that you would hit that null value. There is no way in this case the test statistic is going to fall in the detection region because we've covered the entire interval. So you cannot reject the null. Since now R is doing the calculation internally. I'm giving you the p value for a two tailed test. That is something you've got to be good. <clears throat> Again, someone could actually change the code. There, there is probably a different package that does this exactly the way it's supposed to be. But this is in the base package. P plus is eight, even though P plus is eight. We're finding the probability above, below, adding them, and getting the p value for a two sided test. Good. If I change <coughs> two dot sided up here, two greater. What do I expect the p value to be? Well, I don't know. I heard something. Go ahead. You're correct. Go ahead. I am 0.5. 0.5. Half of what value you have to derive of test statistic. We got one because it is a two sided test. You add the probability under the Imaginary distribution to the right, probability to the left, add them together, you got one. If I simply look at the area above A, then it would be 0.5. Area below 7, which is V minus, what do I expect? Still 0.5. Let's check. Slightly off. Yes, it is off by 0 0.60, um, 6884. That's the Y. Come again. Just using the 
it is using the eight, not seven. Well, if it is used, if it used eight, um, one may argue, well, should we be exactly one time? Again, looking at the area below, and there is that continuity correction part 7.5 that is right in the middle. So, I'll show you what that is. Why is it using the plus and the center? Come again. Why is it using the plus and the center as opposed to some time? V plus is not the center. In this case, the test of this thing that we got from the data, which is very ends up being close to the center that you expect, 7.5. Okay. It, it's not the center. Okay. Yes. Is this for our test? This will be on the test. Um, right over here, <laughs> correct equals true. <coughs> that is what we use for constant correction. You can set it to false. I've heard many people say, should always use correct equals true. I don't agree uh, because correction is required only when you try to approximate using normal distribution. Um, but then when it comes to non parameter statistics, people don't agree much. Uh, I'm really confused on the B plus and the B. So are we just using B plus right now? Yes. And we're not like. Are we ever going to use just B when we're using R or no? Because they don't give us B. It'll always be just B plus. So, like, you can come up with B minus and B using that. Right. So, let's say they're like, oh, like you give us this, and you're asking us a question. Would we need to find B? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Okay. Or B minus, maybe? Okay, so I just need to know like this. Exactly, you just need to know how to interpret that. Good. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is even though the problem let's say is about um, is 0.5, one may not say the probability, one cannot say the probability below is 0.5 for a couple of reasons, continuity corrections and so forth, and that's warning. What does it say? What's tie? Tie is something you wear. Uh, is that what R means by yeah. tie? It's very formal today. So it's like, oh, you're not that joke. <laughs> very bad that joke. Um, tie, so if you have an observation two and two, they are tied together. Right? Yeah. All of that is in a two sample case. In a one sample case, if you are assigning ranks, when you have a tie, the way we assign the rank is we took the average of two divided by two. Look in your table that we did last time. Okay. Right? What are the ranks? Um. Why did we put 1.5? Because we had the average one up. Why did the average? Because they were the same. Okay. same. If you have two observations that are the same, then you can't assign one at position one, the other at position two. Oh. They are the same. So you take the average of the runs, they are tied. Oh. Just like if you're tied in a position in some tournament. Right. Oh. If you base it to uh, players got the exact same score, you cannot say one's better than the other. Right. right? You'll get two. True. Got it. Paul? Oh, but I was just asking the the World Cups and Cyber and Tesla are split up. The B is B plus. Yes. B is B plus. 
always. Yeah. Just like it in, in the Cox and Frampton, anytime you see that output, what is R giving you? Is it giving you W or is it giving you U? U. U. So, but if you know U, can you get W from yes. here? Yes. Yes. With Cox and Frampton, the details for it, I'm sure you read it. Uh, actually, no. I did. I read yes. my notes. No. That's all. Okay. Okay. I didn't read the textbook, but I read <laughs> my notes. My notes. <laughs> I was there. Yeah, I have a witness right here. And we really? look at the R code. I was talking about the text, not the notes. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you did. Are you sure you didn't live in California? No, I didn't. I just like drag out all my vowels. That's what I swim to. Do you have friends who live in California? Um, no. I used to go there a lot to swim, but <laughs> in the state of California. Yeah, like that's where like the best swimmers are. So I would go to like training camps there and stuff. Okay, that's sort of explain. You sound like a valley girl. Oh my god, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Are we clear with this? Yes. So things to know: B plus, B minus. When R gives you the output, it is giving you um, B plus. We got point five for above weight loss, but we did not get that with point five. Again, a couple of reasons why that could happen. Continuous correction. Reason that there are times. Good. Okay. On the third a note here. Yes, yes, the note, yes. Oh wait, BJ, I wanted to tell you something funny. Okay. So yesterday when me and Diana were looking at the code, because we actually were, I saw your note that was like using Darwin for educational purposes only. And I was like, ha ha ha. This and if you recall correctly, I added that because you Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, I remember this day plus. Oh but okay. Well, I'm glad you went through the L code. Yeah. So um, that is our simple example. Now we're going to pick a case um, that is practical. So I'm going to include our usual package. Yes. BSA. We have been through. A, B, C, D. <laughs> Let's pick one from E. It looks a little different today. Oh, there we go. Jump right to E. Oh, we're finding another one? Oh, gosh. Yeah, we're going to delve it. Okay. <laughs> you can tell me a qualifying Dance set. Yes, Earth out. I wonder if executive constant. You just jump right to the very end. Um, executive. Yes, reasonable. We can keep that one. What else? Why do they not put E's at the end of some of those things? Like What's educate, it, there's no E in executive, there's no E. Why? Programmers can get lazy at times. How are you lazy in that, but you're not lazy in F and many compact? <laughs> and programmers are weird. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. are. Yeah, they are. <laughs> you're looking at an example. <laughs> True. Okay. Um, so, a very good um, way for someone to know that I wrote the code is I tend to often create a variable called dat, D-A-T, or data that I loaded, because I'm very good for that thing. So Weird. there are a couple of things that I do, of which will tell, tell people that I wrote that code. 
Um, okay, that's it. Executive is a qualifying example. Wait, BJ, what, what else? What are we looking for? Independent. So, Daza said that would work for Wilcox and Steinbrock. Oh, okay. the entrance, the answer for Okay. Entrance exam, that's it. That will qualify. Anything else? Engineer. X. Okay, exercise. <laughs> so I'm going to, there is one more. So entrance exam, executive, <coughs> exercise. There is one more exercise. See. Entrance. Elderly. Elderly age. But again, we have to look through the data to make a final decision. Um, I think it's entrance. John, sorry, included that of Betty. Oh, okay. Jonathan mentioned engineer, and I'm going to disagree with Jonathan, and I'm going to say we cannot use engineer one. Because it comes from three different. There are three groups, right? Sure, I could just pick one university and analyze it, but by looking at the, the nature of the data, um, I wouldn't go for it. So, options executive, exercise, and entrance. Which one do, should we call Entrance. Entrance. Angie said elderly, too, right? Oh, my. Maybe we should do the old people. No, 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 no. Old people. Elderly. <laughs> Elderly. Do it. So oh, yeah. What do you have against old people? You're annoying AF. <laughs> me and Omar are old. That's right. You're not old, BJ, at all. No, no, no. no. Please don't see me in 30 years. Or even 10. No. Or even 10. They're just like rude. Use the test for 
mean it. In most cases, we'd simply say a location parameter, leave it at that one. There is more, but that's why I tell my collaborators and experimenters in general to ask this stuff. So, uh, okay. The data that we're going to use is entrance. <coughs> What is the very first thing that you should do when you get your hands on that To the null as alternative. Okay, we want to do null alternatively. Great. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So, check assumption. I didn't get shot. We want to check assumption. Yes. Uh, which one are we checking? Um, we're checking if it's one sample. Wait, 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 give me a second. Oh, so the letter N. Normal? No. But it doesn't have to be normal. Very good. Okay. Read my mind. I'm going to catch normal results because this is hypoxic. I'm doing it, you know, just to demonstrate what I would do. In practice, if I encounter something like this, so <laughs> how did we determine or verify it? Thing one normal. Oh, oh, Shapiro Wilkes test. Very good. Yes. Uh, all in terms of pictures, I don't want to uh, speak to an audience and say, "Oh, Shapiro will gave me this number." A rather short picture, right? So visualization. 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 What should we use? A histogram. A histogram or um, box plot. Very good. That's a curve. I'm going to go with the box plot. Reason being <laughs> histograms are better with more observations. If you have maybe 50, 60. You get a better picture. So, are you labeling it as H? It should be B. Earth pants. <laughs> That comes from a game habit. That's also coming from habit. Also, your data is <laughs> <Earth ranks. laughs> Earth ranks. Yeah. Earth ranks. And 
Do we see any outliers? No. Going back to our survival downstairs, the skew happened primarily because of outliers. We got rid of the outliers and the doctor still wasn't normal. So in this case, things seem to be okay. Let's see what uh, Shapiro test gives us if we're going to put entries. There you go. If the null is rejected in Shapiro book, then the data is not normal. Oh, so it is normal. It is normal. So, as I've said, the moment I see this, well, maybe not long, but sometimes it's hard. Uh, just go with the picture. So, normality assumption. It is not violated. So can I do a T test? Yes. So you can do a T test that is also as appropriate. Well, we can do both, right? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to. So now is the time to come up with um, a hypothesis. Let's see. Some of you are education majors. Let's say someday when Phoebe gets really old <laughs> and ends up becoming a principal. Oh my God. And annoying as blah, blah. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? That was what you were saying. <laughs> um, what, would you, what, you, what would you, if you were the <laughs> others, can't chime in too? Who uh, are education majors? Education, education. Oh, so cool. if you someday become, say, the principal or superintendent, what would an appropriate hypothesis be? For what? For this summer. For the data? Let's let's say these not these 24 students come from one school. Let's say your school. Okay. And you are the principal. Any thoughts? Four students are passing. What would you want to test? Let's say parents are complaining in during PTA meetings. And you want to, you know, show some evidence that your students are doing just fine. Students who have Nikki? I would probably go uh, students with a score of 65 or higher. Very good. Great. Very good. So if you are, you know, at a PTA meeting and parents are complaining, you know, the school is not doing a great job, blah, blah, blah. And you can say, well, this is the data. Based on the data, the average is greater than 65. 70. 70 is what's required. Well, because that's a C. So yeah. we'll no, I don't know these engine scores as to what they mean. We're uh, let's sense. stick with Nikki's case. She is the principal. Yes. So, I'm just a um, <laughs> No, I got yes. Yeah, <laughs> There's like the level of teaching in education classes tested if you get over 20% correct. Are average. Yeah, well, of course, schools be like, that's fine. Uh, so, look what's inside one. The null median is less than or equal to 65. Alternative median greater than. Very good. This is the right tail test.
one sample. So I'm just simply going to enter this pause. And this is not a pad case. Uh, we'll keep the confidence level at 0.95. I'll fill with 0.25. One minus that value. Alternative, I'm choosing greater because I'm doing a right tail test. Change your, your WC. You're using it. Not overwriting it. Now, this problem, do you really want to do this manually? No. no. So, what can we say by looking at those numbers? I have said it is greater than zero, but should it be zero? No. No. What should it be? 65. 65. Wait, whoa, whoa. Because that's your null order. Oh, wait, what? So that is the null value. So yeah. we have to test it. So if it's null or zero, then that would make sense, but mm -hmm. it's not. So we are going to do null equals zero with the rule called set sign round for the path case. So the no, Go ahead. That's what we get. Look at that, and you tell me. Make sure you're the principal. What would you say during the BTA meeting? Are you going to ask the parents to shut up? Yeah. Yeah. Parents say yes. yes. Yes, absolutely. You have evidence to back you up based on the data that we have. Um, the location parameter, which in this case is the median. It is greater than 65. Students are performing well, you know, passing, moving on. And the p value is 0 0.02865. Based on the sample, the chances that Nikki would go wrong if this study is repeated over and over again in concluding that statement, in concluding students are doing just fine. The chance of being wrong is only 2.865 percent, right? If that number happened to be 98.65 percent and Nikki concluded this, then that's a problem. But that's not the case. 2.865 percent, very small probability, and not only that, it is less than a conventional family of alpha point of five. I have a question. Yes. So if we're just looking at the p value, like why do we even need the to tell us anything? Like we already know how to reject the null. Using the p value? Yeah. So why do we need the repeat that question? Okay, so they give us B and they give us our P value. Mm -hmm. And we're deciding do we need to reject the null or not. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the P value. But what's the point of how, like why do we need B there if we're all we're doing is looking at the P oh, value? Oh, I see. So without V, you can't calculate the P value. Okay. So like you need you? Yeah, you I mean just like a T test. Can you compute the P value without the test statistic T? You need the test of this. So, conclusion there is evidence to support that the median score is greater than what value? 65. Okay. So, we can merely say to the parents that they can shut up. <laughs> This is why I would be in the principal. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say it. I can't do school system, no, I don't have that much patience. I get on well with kids, but still no. Um, can I do a t-test? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, our assumptions are not violated. Let me ask you this question. 
do we expect to get a different answer or conclusion? No. No. If the t test also gives us the same conclusion, let's say that there is always someone in the crowd during that meeting who might turn around and say, well, you've only looked at this, it can't be argue with you unnecessarily and waste our time. Um, so you may have another test since things are violated or the assumption is not violated. I can do a regular one sample t test. But only this time, um, it is appropriate because it's normal. It's normal. Okay. Um, let's see if you can give me the null and the alternative. What is the null? Has to do with the mean. Oh, the mean is greater than mu, right? Not the median. Yeah. Mu is less than or equal to sixty-five. Uh, put a note here. M is the median score. Down there. New is the I'm sorry, mean sorry mean score, average score, same thing. And for the record, don't say, you know, shout out to parents. It's just rude. Yeah, we learned even if they are rude, you have to be One question before I type the output here. Um, 217, is that B? B plus. It is B plus. Um, we could have simply used B plus um, to find the P value, or as simply using B plus to find the P value. Okay. Clearly, there are types. Um, results from a t test. And Nikki, what do you think? Similar result, different result? Very similar. If you look at the p value, very close to what we have with glucose. This is happening because the data is normal. If you don't have a normal uh, data that is normally distributed, one, you can't use the t test. Two, the p value is going to be way off. Um, the advantage of the t-test is it can give you an interval. So, of course, we can't go all the way up to infinity. The one-sided interval here is 65.77 all the way up to not infinity, maximum score 100. Um, the average for that score is 70.04. And if someone says, well, this is just one time, uh, one sample, well, that the purpose of statistics is to demonstrate, well, if I just have one sample and I've repeated the study over and over, 95% of the time, this average score is going to fall in that range. It will be over 65. Good. Okay, so the mean is actually 70. Mm -hmm. Oh, so That's it's, it's greater. Okay, and That's then it falls sum. in the, um, the confidence interval. Yes, okay. and do keep in mind, just because this number is greater doesn't mean that you can conclude uh, that we reject the no. Yeah, we just have to look at the p-value. We look at the p-value. Now, Leo earlier mentioned, why don't you use 70 passing rate, whatever? If I had used 70 
Do you believe that I'll be protecting the door? Close. Probably not. Yeah. Quite too close. Too close. So if there is a smart parent in the crowd, if they make a valid statement such as this, well, C is the path for the standard. Your school did not meet that standard. You have to agree with that parent absolutely. Right? You can't say, oh, it's, you know, David, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Shut <laughs> you know, up. Uh, you can't say that. You can't say that to the parents because you will be in the wrong. Okay? So 65, reasonable, 70, absolutely not. The parent is correct. Good. You have to be for yourself. Okay. Um, I thought I would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll stop there.